Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemuck, and over there on vacation, technically, <laughs> is John. Hey. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Um, as John put out a post earlier this morning, I was not feeling the greatest. Um, I had helped my mom move, and um, my body was sore. I was not a uh, hunt. Me and John were not a hundred percent sure how I'd recover. Um. I recovered enough to get to this point, <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly because of this, as football, um, as the NFL draft was today. But before right. I get into any other talking, I want to plug our sponsor, Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com or visit their eBay page at Hockey Locker Milwaukee. I believe they still have an eBay page. All right. So with me talking about the Packers, um, first off, I wanted to say something really quickly. Um, uh, AJ Brown of the Titans traded to Philadelphia for the 13th overall pick. Okay. Um, uh, so a little Titans news for you guys as well. Uh, for those of you that were watching the Preds game and did not see this happen, um, yeah, that happened. And the Packers, uh, welcome to Wisconsin, Quay Walker, inside linebacker from the University of Georgia. Okay. Um, inside linebacker, uh, versatile linebacker. He, he played very well. And then they went and got their defensive linemen as well who could play uh, inside or outside. So a little versatility for the Packers on defense, uh, something that they lack a little bit uh, as far as depth goes in that area. So uh, we, we still show some love for our, our, our local sports, but let's get back into this because right. stuff happens. And I'm not talking about Saros. Uh, as far as Saros goes, as much as we know as he is, has a high ankle sprain. I think that's what I heard. Yeah, that's um, what I heard. Five, three. Um, it was a radio station. Um, he'll be out four weeks. Four to six. Yeah. What for the radio the station report. So uh, I, it's nothing from what I heard from the Preds. I didn't hear it during the game. Um, but I only got to watch the third because I was watching the draft. Because I was curious to see what would go down because I'd heard a lot of rumors. So none of what I heard happened. So um, shots were 46 to 37 uh, in favor of, of the Avalanche, but that was about it in that category. Um, Preds were almost at 60% for their face-offs. Uh, Preds were one for four on the power play where the Avalanche were one for six, six 14 penalty minutes for the Preds, 10 for the Avalanche, 42 hits for the Preds, 33 for the Avalanche, 48 <laughs> blocks, eight giveaways apiece. Uh, blocks for the Avalanche were 12. The Preds were 14 to 8. Uh, um, also, the takeaways were 11 to 4 in favor of the Avalanche. So, uh, well, uh, not really. Uh, well, not really in favor, but they had more take uh, takeaways. Correct. All right. So, um, scoring of the first was Kale Bakar, his 28th, with an assist from Ned Zucadri, his 59th. Uh, then Arteri Lakenin got his 19th with an assist for Manson, his 10th, and Bar, uh, what is that? Barkovsky, his 39th, uh, putting the Avalanche up 2 0 within the first seven minutes of the game. Yeah. Um, then Matt Duchesne strikes with his 43rd of the season with an assist for Gradlin, his 53rd, and Yossi, his uh, 52nd, and Yossi, his 72nd. Yeah, Yossi is 72nd. Uh, then Logan O'Connor scores his eighth with an assist from, uh, I don't remember how to say your name. Ube Kubel. Yeah, his 12th. Uh, then Yossi scores his 23rd with an with unassisted on the power play, giving him 95 points on the season. Yep. Um, then scoring in the third period uh, was Matisse Ekholm. He had his sixth of the season with an assist from Alexander Carrier, his 27th. And Mikhail Gradlin, his 30, or sorry, 30, 53rd. Uh, Carrier, uh, points points, I believe he has 30 points on the season. I would not be yet. Uh, 
let's take a look here. Three goals. He has three goals. 27 assists. So that would put him at 30 points. Yep. Um, and Yossi had two points in this game, giving him 95. 95 points for Roman Yossi. If he gets five points against <laughs> Arizona <laughs> tomorrow, he he could get 100, but uh, I, I highly unlikely us. Right. Overtime, nothing. Um, so we gained a point, which put us to back tied and ahead of Dallas at the time because uh, we lead still in the uh, uh, ROW category uh, regulation wins. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering who had the tiebreaker in that because I know in points we're tied. And then uh, Duchesne scores first in the shootout. Um, five hole on um, a Darcy Kemper, who he is no stranger of. Um, as Kemper has pretty much played for almost every team in the Central Division except for the Preds. Right. He played for Arizona. He played for the Wild. He played for now Colorado. What are you going to do? Go to the Blues next? Um, then uh, McKinnon's, McKinnon, he, he, he was trying to do too much. Forsberg tried to do too much. Ratton and just looked confused. Yeah. Uh, Granlin, he tried to do the same thing Duchesne did from the other side. Didn't work for him. And Nems of Kadri, I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> that was one of the worst. Well, okay, that's not the worst overtime thing I've ever done. Because see, because I've watched Brad Marchand miss the puck completely on the takeoff, and they blew it. Right. Like he right. Oh you wow! Know, so he bumped the puck forward enough to for them to blow it dead. Um, scratches for the Preds were uh, Jimmy Lazan. By the way, happy birthday, uh, Ben Harper, Matt Block. Billy Tolvin and Jamie Davies and UC Saros, UC Saros, speedy recovery. Um, yes. Alex Newhook, Ryan Murray, Curtis McDermott, and Ben Myers, and Gabriel Landeskog all out for Colorado. I'm not sure if those were all injuries or healthy scratches. I do not know what their injury um, looks like, what their injured list looks like. Um, Yeah, it was a good hard-fought game tonight. Yep, sorry about that. I'm picking up uh, the uh, injury report list here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, for Colorado, it is... What? Okay, Landis Cog is out with a D injury, expected to be back May 2nd. Uh, Ryan Murray is out with a hand injury, expected to be out... May 2nd, and day-to-day -day for Alex Newhook. Um, did Boro return to the ice at all, did you see? Yes. He did, okay. I must have missed that. Saros is expected to be out till May 2nd. They're going to reevaluate him then, I think. And uh, Lazad's out till the 29th, which is tomorrow. So to Lazad was on, on the ice for the morning skate today. Okay. Um, I see that a lot of teams are resting guys and calling guys up. Yeah, they are. 
I mean, holy smokes. There's a lot of guys on Philly's IR. Um, uh, So that eliminates that. All righty. So Yossi does have 95 points. Okay. Uh, which puts him at the top of the category for uh, defensive points. <laughs> Yes, Roman Yossi is uh, ahead of Makar by almost 11 points. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's been playing real well this season. He's also played two more games than Makar. So, um, in that for uh, the Preds was David Grit, Dave, Big Save Dave. Riddick seemed to not play well early on in the game. Right. And then once the third or second period happened, he really settled down. Yeah, he did. It took him a period to get uh, settled in, I think, too. I'm also curious to something. Okay, yes. So he faced 20 shots in the first period, 14 in the second, nine in the third, three in overtime. Okay. So he was peppered in the first. Yeah, he was. So actually giving up three in the first after facing 20 shots to seven. Yeah, I can see why you. You know. But. I don't know. Oh. So he stopped. 42 of 46 with a 0 .93, 0 0.913 save percentage in net for the Avalanche, as I said, was Darcy Kemper stopping 33 of 37 with a 0 .892 save percentage. Um, he faced 14 shots in the third uh, and 13 in the second, so they, they definitely tried to even it up there, and in this OT, they were both even at three shots apiece. Yeah. Um, as Colorado did dominate the puck control in that most of the time, um, but Nashville stayed clamped to their defense and yeah, they did. It got them to a shootout, and uh, Riddich held it from there. So, um, as as the easiest way of saying this, big two points. Oh yeah, because they're. You're going to hear this from me, and you're probably going to hear this from John. I want the Flames. Yeah. I want to avenge something. I want to feel like this is something worth, worth it. I think we stand a better chance against the Flames. Um. Due to our physical style of play and their physical style of play, we could wear them down. Yeah. We could also do the same with Colorado, but I don't think that – I think Colorado would just outskill us at some point. I don't know. We have a that, lot of – to our game, there's just not a lot of skill, and when it comes to netminders, we don't have that. Right. Um, like I said, we'll really see how things go, see how much of a fighting – player Saros is as well and go from there um big day tomorrow uh 
the uh, Everblades play the Greensville Swamp Rabbits in game four of their series for the first round of the Kelly Cup uh, playoffs. Uh, the Admirals play Rockford to determine who gets third place. Um, and we play Arizona and we hold our own destiny. If we get a point, we get the, the, the flag. So get a point. Right. Two points and we clinch it. One point and it's ROW and we still got it there. Right. So if I remember reading that 100% correctly. So we'll, we'll see. Big day tomorrow. Um, also, show coming from me and John on Sunday in the system uh, in the evening time, or it'll be released on Monday. Uh, that will be on our Facebook and our Twitter page, our YouTube page. Um, we are actually bringing back YouTube uh, for the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, um, if we start compartmentalizing our shows, um, I hope you understand why you're not seeing like Admirals games, Preds games, and Everblades games all in the same show. It's because we're trying to do what's best for um, YouTube. For right. As well, um, as far as that goes, um, we'll be probably doing um, maybe even doing like uh, two different sets of videos. Do one video where we do all three games, and one video where we do three different um, sets. And I know that's more work for me and him, but we do what we do for. Try, we got this page sitting there, haven't done much with it, so let's start doing something with it. Right. <laughs> Um, so, uh, there's that. Hope you guys enjoyed his graphics today. I saw those got up there as well. Um, yeah, I forgot to post them yesterday. <laughs> um, as well, uh, I am, uh, it is 11.30 here, which means it is 12.30 where John is. Yeah. So, John's going to need some rest for tomorrow as well as we will be, that game starts at 9.30, so 10 o'clock his time, so. Yeah. It'll be a late night for him. He he wants to be on the show, so we're gonna yeah. Do we plus, gonna yeah. Plus, I'm watching the Admirals game as well tomorrow. Yeah, I did get my AHL TV figured out. Good. Speaking of AHL TV, Preds fans, if you're looking for something to do tomorrow around seven o'clock, AHL TV or watch the AHL.com. The Admirals are the free game. Admirals versus Rockford on AHL TV. Yeah. And, and cheer us on as we try to get our, our, our third place spot to face the moose. It is a very slim, slim lead. Point <laughs> zero zero two percent right. is the lead. Gotta win tomorrow. Yeah. So your butts about it. Gotta win tomorrow. Or we're playing in the playing round. So See y'all tomorrow. Enjoy. Just remember, Preds fans, you can watch two hockey games tomorrow. Admirals at 7 o'clock. Watch the AHL.com. Um, set up a, an account. I don't even think you have to. For the I'm not game. sure. Even if you do, um, it's more than worth setting up an account just to watch them. Uh, you'll learn more about the system. Um, as of, I believe, 8 o'clock tomorrow night, the AHL or KHL free agency opens. We'll see what starts there as well with Yaroslav Askarov, see where things are going there as well. We'll probably maybe even do a show tomorrow at some point talking about that, right. um, um, what that could mean for the team. But as I can hear all the way from here, I got to go. The baby is driving my wife crazy. I'm going to go help. I got to go make her a bottle and I got to be a dad. So I will see y'all later. <laughs>